Aloha and welcome back to part two of the bedroom building. Most of the walls are done, the ceiling is done, the header above the backboard is done. So all we really have left to do in here, as far as covering the walls goes, is the wainscoting uh, from the woven mat down to the floor. We're going to get started on that today. So for the wainscoting, I am using this unfinished tambour paneling, which is just strips of bamboo on a like mesh back. Um, so I went with the natural because what I really wanted was they have like a, a coffee, like mocha um, colored, and they're out of it all over Florida. So there's three places that you can get it and none of them had it. So I'm getting the natural and then I'll just stain it to the color that I want. Uh, but what makes this easy too is you just get your initial plan uh, if you leave it in the plastic too, bonus because it kind of keeps it all together. But I'm going to cut it as a roll right through at the uh, 39 and a half that I need it to be. And then we'll get all the plugs cut out and the windows and then we'll stain it. So one thing that you do want to watch out for is on the end here, you want to make sure that this is flush and not you know, poked out or anything like this. So when you're making that cut, then your entire top edge is going to be uneven. So you want to make sure that this is flat before you do the initial cut. Very important. All right, so I'm really not sure which direction I want to go is in regards to color. <clears throat> I know it's going to be either the burnt umber or the raw umber of the Japan colors. Um, or it might even be a blend of the two. So we'll see. So I cut out some pieces from my roll of uh, extra. I'm going to do a couple little color samples and see which one sings to me. All right, now we're gonna give those a few moments to dry. I think I really do like the, uh, the burnt umber. Um, you know, it's gonna dry flat, so it'll look a little bit different than that gloss that's on it. And the raw umber, I like as well. It's just, I know this one's gonna dry a little more of like a darker green, whereas this one obviously being um, raw sienna is gonna go, you know, more of a reddish hue. And I think that one's going to kind of go in our room a little bit better, but we'll see when they dry. So I'll give them a few minutes. happy that that is a small room. The time lapse may be deceiving, but <laughs> that was a pain in the butt. My arms are killing me. Uh, but I love the finish that it came out with. It's not even, so it's got a lot of modeling to it. It looks natural. It looks aged. I, it, I think it's really beautiful. We'll come in and take a closer look. So as you can see down here, it's starting to dry, but it, it goes between this this dark and this light and it just it looks like it's already been on the side of a building for you know 50 years I I really love the way that it came out I love the way it looks um, it is a pain but I think it's worth it I think it's a nice extra touch to just go away from the fact that it's you're just stapling you know mats on walls this gives it a little bit more of a lived in look. And then I'm planning on going into the rest of the room and uh, 
doing an age on the corners of the woven mats to kind of tie it all in together. So we're going to give that a moment to dry and get it uh, stapled up and then start the next piece. This house has a really bad uh, settle, a lean to it. Um, so it's been needing to get uh, raised up in one corner, so all the, the floor is kind of leaned towards this bedroom corner, which is the outside corner of the, of the house. So today, finally, we have a guy coming to raise it up, <laughs> and we're going to find out how bad it is. I'm really curious. I have my own guesses on how many inches it drops, like I'm upwards of like four, maybe. And over the course of an entire house, leaning four inches is a lot, so we're going to see what it actually is here in a little bit when he shows up. And of course, I'm going to time lapse it because it's cool. So now that he's gone, um, it's actually like, it's kind of discombobulating. I'm so used to this house leaning that now that it's leveled out, it actually feels like kind of wonky to me. But it's very level, it's very secure, and uh, the actual inches, which I will show right here, are two and a half inches of drop, which he informed me is a lot. I mean, I was saying four inches and that would have been like way, way too much. So two and a half inches is a lot in the uh, mobile home tilting world, I guess. So it's, it's fixed now and uh, it's sturdy. I was also really worried that like some of the panels were gonna pop, like maybe any twisting was gonna cause some kind of weirdness, especially down in these ones, because these ones are always bound up whenever I, when I put them in. So everything came out perfectly. Um, there's a little bit of a wrinkle in a piece up here, but I can pop a staple and fix that. Other than that, it's fine in here. The ceiling's fine, the pieces didn't pop off, so everything is good, and we're level now, which is a big hurdle that we've been wanting to get over for a bit now, so very happy for that. So now we're back to staining panels and getting them on the walls. All right, well, the uh, Wayne's coating is done, and all the mats are done. All I have left to do in here is do the trim, do the floors, and come up with a way to make the ceiling look right, where I'm thinking about using either uh, eucalyptus poles or bamboo to do like a grid to make it look like it's the underside of a, uh, actual thatched roof, which is what this material is supposed to, you know, convey. It's all made out of reeds and uh, glued to masonite. So if you come in there and cover your seam with some kind of a eucalyptus pole or, or a bamboo pole and then wrap it in rope. And then for the ceiling here, I'm thinking about doing a wooden box that'll sleeve over this and then probably take one of the uh, paint patterns that you see at the Polynesian. They have a lot of little, uh, you know, patterns along trim work inside the lobby. There's also a lot that run vertically on the uh, actual hotel buildings around the property. So I'm thinking about doing something like that on a dark stained uh, aged wood for that whole ceiling cap. So. I'm going to come back to this room um, when I start doing trim, probably. I think I'm going to skin out everything in the house first.
and then do trim for like, you know, two weeks straight. <laughs> or I may do it in here now. I don't know. We'll see. Stay tuned. All right. So I've decided that I'm going to do some trim in here. There's really no point in, uh, I have a lot of work to do in the living room and the kitchen, and it'd be kind of nice to get this done, uh, everything minus the floor and the baseboards, which we still have to figure out. But I can do all of the molding on the walls and ceiling edge. So I'm going to start with the window here. Um, <clears throat> what I'm using for the trim is uh, Amazulu has this really cool bamboo strips that make it super easy. Every one of them are an inch and three quarters in width, so it's really easy to work with. Uh, instead of trying to get different uh, bamboo or half bamboo, um, this stuff works really well. So the three different types that Amazulu carries is we have natural, so it's a, it's a pre-cut, actually half of a bamboo, uh, bamboo slat they call it. So this one is natural, and then mocha is what I'm going to use in the bedroom. And they also have a dark mahogany, but I don't think they had any in. Um, otherwise, I, that's right. I was going to get this one, but they didn't have any in. Um, so, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, actually, is kind of enhance these a little bit. So these are the pieces. And, you know, that sometimes they have a little of this, like, stain wetness where it sat. And I'm going to kind of come back with the Japan colors and give them a little bit more definition. Um, so I'm using the mocha in the bedroom, and I'm going to use the natural in the living room here, which will be in the living room's video. Uh, but since this room is mostly of the dark uh, woven mat ceiling and the wainscoting, I'm going to use the light color in here. So, here we go. So for the trim work, it's already kind of a mocha, so I want to go with the raw umber. Also because I did the bottom wainscoting with the uh, raw sienna. So I kind of want this darker greener color to go in there. So we're going to see how that looks. Alright, I really like the way that looks. Uh, I'll bring you along here. So. Gives it really cool color. Takes it away from just kind of chalky one. It makes it just a little bit richer. And still in that dark color that isn't quite, you know, in this red that the mahogany's in. So I think it just kind of embellishes the mocha that we uh, originally got. So I'm happy with it. All right, so in the spirit of things that I've learned while working with this stuff and me passing some of that information on to you guys, uh, this is one that I have learned when you're working with this molding. So, to hide your nails a lot easier, put your nails into the knuckles. And if you can, if you're just going into drywall, angle them a little bit. So like if you do this one this direction, do this one that direction, so it bites in a lot better. Because a lot of these have a bow in it, and it'll hold. Another one is get yourself a small scrap piece and put it up against the other edge and line it up to where you want it to go. And then you can put this one in and you know for a fact that it's gonna sit right. If you don't, you run the risk of it being a little too high and now you have this lip or a little too low and it's overhanging. So if you use these kind of as a guide, because you know, there is a lot of variation in the fact that there's thickness differences. Um, you know, the width will always be the same, but the, the, the thickness is always, uh, you know, ever changing. So it can be a little off throwing, especially when you go to cut it, it'll sit a little differently on the uh, chop saw. So I like to use a little scrap piece to make sure I'm always in line. And then also, you can take your next piece, if you cut a corner in it already, you bring it across, and then you can use this to make your next mark and make sure you're cutting in the right spot. But the first piece is in, I can come back in with the stain 
and make these disappear completely. And I like the way that looks. And I went with the dark in here also because it, it has that light around and I want that contrast. So, good deal. I'm gonna keep going. So, a, uh, another cool thing I've decided to do. I was talking about the versatility in the Japan paint, and uh, one of the things that I really like doing is you can paint it on and kind of let it set up a little bit, and then you come back with your spritzer and you wet it down, but if you go really light in some areas, it'll fill in those dots, and then you wipe it away, and you're left with this kind of grime look. And it adds just a really cool age feature to it. I'm a big fan of this, I love doing it. And it's kind of, and, and it's nice to have a little like moldy age looking thing instead of just a pristine, you know, tiki house. Another thing that I wanna point out, and this one's very important. So it's bamboo, it's very thick, and it is also uh, difficult to use a nail gun on sometimes. So, whenever you're using your nail gun, don't ever grab anywhere near the right or the left because with the grain structures and the way that the grain is running inside of these bamboo sections, a lot of times these things will actually turn and come back out and they'll easily stab you and it really hurts. Another thing which has happened over here is my first shot, I was aiming in, in right here and it literally went far right hit the wall and bounced off. So the nail disappeared and ended up somewhere in the room. So with that, also watch your eyes. I should probably be wearing safety glasses for a lot of things that I do, and those could be famous last words, so I should heed my own advice and, and wear safety glasses when I'm, especially when I'm nailing in these bamboo strips. I kind of forget how unruly they can be. So just watch your nail guns when you're going into things like this because they can ricochet and shoot off the side. And uh, thank you for coming to my Tom talk. <laughs>
wired sockets for building lamps that I hooked up to the uh, wires coming out of the ceiling so that I can have light back in here because it gets pretty dark when I work late. And uh, got another one for the hallway here. But I also wanted to show you guys the work I did last night. Um, the lighting was kind of off, and I don't know if you could see it very well, but I wanted to show the little scenic aging that I had done on these uh, bamboo slats uh, around the windows. So I was talking about how you can use the Japan colors to give it like a moldy mottled kind of look because I wanted like a good age on it. So you can put the Japan colors over the, the bamboo, wipe it back to get it a nice stain on it, but then leave some areas dark and let those dry. And then you come back in with a little spritz from far away of the uh, paint thinner. And it just, everywhere that the dot hits, when you go to like kind of blot it and wipe it away, you're left with these really cool kind of moldy looking paint finish. You know, do a big one. You kind of want to come back and just let a mist fall on it. So it's just a fine mist. And then when you come back in and you wipe it, it'll remove just where that water or where that thinner hit and gives you this really cool little modeled look. Sometimes it can be a little too contrived and with that you just come at it again or you can keep kind of rubbing it away and it'll soften it. I want a little more. So just a fine mist and then wipe that back and it gives you that nice amount. You don't want it to be like a polka dot. Just subtly. So kind of coming up with the game plan in here, I know I wanted to frame out the main things first. So we got the windows framed out and that's your good starting point. Next I'm gonna do the door because once you do those, then you start working on the framing out of the rest of the walls and these little side pieces are gonna get put in after this is done and after this is done. You do the windows first and then you do the sides and then you do the fillers in Next, so you have to kind of take into account that you want your next piece to butt up like this and not go all the way through, which is why you do the main things first. And another thing that I've, I'm coming to, I, so the floors are not done in here yet, and the floors are going to get their own molding around the bottom. The pieces that are here going down to the ground are going to have to hit that molding when it gets put in after the floors are done. The good thing is, is that these are all over the length of one of those, of one of these sticks at full size. So I can come down and it'll probably end up about right here. So I can come back in when the floors get done, do the base molding, and then come back and put in all those little filler pieces around the room. No idea what kind of carpet they had in this place at some point. But why is there a gap that big? There's no need for a gap that big.
the ends of these are never straight. They are always locked off some wonky ass angle. So my recommendation is that if you're going to have one that you have to join back into later, go and cut the end at a 45, and cut it square. I didn't do it on this side, whatever, I'll figure it out. But this side I did do it on, so now I have a square edge that I know is gonna be straight when I go to put my next piece of wood in. Um, something to think about. <laughs> for the middle section. Get all those installed today. Uh, still have the uppers to do, but I still have to do the ceiling before I can really get in and start trimming these pieces out. So that will be a very good chunk done today. I'm pretty happy. Keep going. I'm pretty happy with that. Looks good in here. All right, well, that's it for the bedroom. Thank you so much for watching. It was a bit of a long one, I'm sorry, but I hope it was entertaining. Uh, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and I have another one in the works coming out soon. So I will see you all later. Mahalo.